Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, watch a katana come together through the magic of time-lapse photography. So I recently made a time-lapse video showing the progress of a katana being made. Now, if you're just interested in uh, watching some cool pictures, that's the video for you. But uh, this one is going to have more commentary and kind of explain the whole process, and you'll get to see some uh, shots of me actually doing the work at the same time. Now, I should mention that this video doesn't show the actual forging of the blade itself. A lot of people think that's the most significant part of making a, a katana. It's the coolest looking part, the fire and the forge and all that stuff, but it's actually not the most important part of the process. So my plan is to do another video somewhere down the line that I'm really going to show the, you know, the forging and the whole process from start to finish. Maybe even showing the smelt, making tamahagane, you know, the whole process soup to nuts, but not in this one. Here's the katana straight out of the forge. You may notice that it has a somewhat awkward shape right now, an awkward curvature. It's actually curving down toward the tip. We'll see why that is later. I start by working the blade on the belt grinder. At this point, I'm just kind of knocking off the scale and getting rid of pits, dings, scale, wobbles, all sorts of inconsistencies that are a normal part of the forging process. You have to do this very carefully because one tiny little screw up can throw off the geometry of the blade. Now, while my real focus in this section is just getting the surface of the blade cleaned up, I'm also very, very gently manipulating the shape. You'll notice that the blade gets a good bit thinner and gains some taper as I go. When I first got started 15 or 20 years ago, I would have jumped off the grinder at this point and moved to scrapers and hand files to refine the geometry. But now that I'm much more skilled on the grinder, which by the way is a tool that takes a lot of practice and skill to use well, I can just move up to higher grit belts that remove metal very slowly and keep refining the shape on the grinder rather than going to hand tools. Eventually though, I'll always turn to hand filing to do the final shaping. So as we approach the point of being ready to quench, you'll see that the blade still has this odd somewhat awkward curve toward the tip. This isn't accidental. One last step and we'll see why. So now I'm applying clay. This will act as an insulator or heat sink depending on how you look at it, which will cause only the edge to harden when the blade is quenched. This will result in a squiggly line known as a hamon, which runs down the entire length of the blade and acts as a visual marker of the part of the blade that's hardened. The hamon is considered to be a signature aspect of a blade and is one of the primary avenues of artistic expression on a katana. Now we'll quench in water, which will harden the steel of the blade. As you'll see in a moment, after the quench, the blade has curved about two centimeters or three quarters of an inch. The way I make swords, this tends to be exaggerated almost imperceptibly toward the tip. So if I simply quenched a dead flat or dead straight blade, it would end up with more curvature at the tip than I wanted. To avoid this, I add in that tiny amount of negative curvature at the tip, and we're left with a relatively even curve. Hey, I should mention that if you're finding this interesting and are considering trying making a sword yourself, I've got a five video series available that covers 
forging, heat treating, polishing, hamones, uh, as well as many aspects of making the hardware, the handle, the scabbard, all the things that allow you to actually grab hold of that sword and do something with it. Find them at waltersorrelsblades.com. All right, back to work. Now it's back to the grinder to briefly clean up the surface of the steel, thin the edge, which has been left slightly thick so that it won't crack or decarburize during the quench, and take out some wobbles induced by the quench. Then I'll turn to the single most time-consuming part of making a katana, the final shaping and polishing of the blade. This is accomplished by working the blade on a series of increasingly fine-grained water stones until the final shape and surface texture of the blade is achieved. In Japan, this is largely done by an independent polisher rather than by the smith. Fun fact, Japanese sword polishers actually undergo a longer apprenticeship than swordsmiths do, and that's due to the demandingness of that particular discipline. This multi-day process is compressed here into a matter of less than a minute. Now I'll do the final cosmetic polish of the blade. This doesn't remove any appreciable amount of material, it just reveals the structure of the steel in a visible way. While the end result, revealing the texture of the steel and the hamon, is relatively similar to that used by traditional polishers, the way I get it there is totally different. Here I'm etching and polishing the blade using a sequence of extremely dilute etchants, metal polishers, and abrasives. After a separate operation of counter-polishing the tip of the blade, I'll wrap the sword to make sure I don't screw up the hundred or so hours I've invested in the work, and file the tang to shape by hand. Like many facets of this work, it's a very slow process. It results in a network of tiny scratch marks, which act as something of a signature. And here's the final result. While I do make blades from folded modern steel, as well as from traditional tamahagane that I smelt myself, this is not one of those blades. This is a homogeneous modern steel, so the grain structure that would be found in a traditionally made blade is not there. However, the hamon, as you can see, stands out quite boldly. So like I mentioned at the beginning, I'd like to do another version of this where I start with the smelting of tamahagane, then the uh, preliminary forging, then the actual forging of the blade, plus all of the part that you saw here. So 
If I do that, you'll be the first to know. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!